Happy Mana Monday. I'm excited and so happy to be able to present our 17th Mana Monday today. My name is Paula M. Adams, and I am the Administrative Assistant to Pastor Chiron Wegar here at the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I would like to thank Pastor Wegar for his influence and leadership over our ministries, and I would like to thank our beautiful Elder Manushka for the invitation to share this Man of Monday today, as well as being my friend and my prayer partner. So let's pray and get right into the word. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this manna word today. It is a strong word, a clear word, God. And I pray it's received by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. And it reads from the Amplified Version. Then the Lord came and stood and called, as at the previous times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will ring. On that day, I will carry out against Eli everything that I have spoken concerning his house and family. From beginning to end. Now I have told him that I'm about to judge his house forever for the sinful behavior which he knew was happening because his sons were bringing a curse on themselves, dishonoring and blaspheming God, and he did not rebuke them. Therefore, I have sworn to the house of Eli that the sinful behavior of Eli's house and family shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until morning. Then he opened the doors of the Lord's house, but Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli said to Samuel, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. Then Eli said, what is it that he said to you? Please do not hide it from me. May God do the same to you and more also. If you hide from me anything of all that he said to you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. And Eli said, it is the Lord. May he do what seems good to him. Two key points God wants me to share with you today. Point number one. God's words to us don't always come with a feeling of peace and joy when we have not been obedient. And number two, if God does not say yes, don't you sit in that mess. I can say amen right there. However, the Lord won't let me do it until I bless you. Come on in here. I love the story of Samuel. You always have, especially as a child, because God is here talking to a child in Samuel. And I always wanted God to talk to me as a child and use me. Then as a woman, I love the idea that Hannah's prayer was answered after she suffered with infertility, bullying, depression, and being accused of uh, drinking in church. But she still remained faithful to God in 1 Samuel chapter 2. And that's how the backstory goes. But our focus today is on how God's message to Samuel made him afraid to tell his father in the ministry, the high priest, what God said. I believe that most sincere believers want to hear from God. However, when they do, it may not be the message they anticipated to hear. You will get the new job. You are cancer free. That is the person I want you to marry. Or even that there will be showers of blessing in the season of life. Often we want to make God a spiritual Santa Claus. Give him a list and receive our gifts. But the message in this word is a straightforward judgment. Like the one in our text today. No sacrifice or atonement you make will stop the consequences of your actions from happening. 
in 1 Samuel chapter 2, Eli had already been warned by a prophet to rebuke his sons from stealing God's offering and sleeping with the women in the church. And now he uses the young man Samuel, who was obedient, even to waking up three times at night. How often do we get these kids up? and they don't feel like getting up. How often do you wanna get up for work or go to school? Or what if you get that nudge in the middle of the night from your spouse? Get up. We typically don't wanna get up and say, here I am. But Samuel was that kind of child and he was obedient for that. So in verses 11 through 13, it says that from the commentary J.F. Brown, it states, Though it was a disgrace to Eli for God's call to be directed to Samuel, yet Eli told him how to meet it. The burden of the Lord's message was an extraordinary premonition of the judgments that impeded over Eli's house, the aged priest, having drawn the painful secret from the child, Eli exclaimed, It is the Lord. May he do as it seems good to him, Amplified Version. Such is a spirit of a meek and unmurmuring submission in which we ought to receive the dispensations of God, however severe and afflictive. Even when God's messages don't come with joy and peace, our response can be, one of submission and meekness. We cannot hide from God's correction. God was letting and setting an example, an example for Samuel that if God does not say yes, don't you dare sit in that mess. Amen? I often have asked the question of colleagues, friends, family from time to time. How fast should you change an infant or a baby's diaper if it is dirty? And the response is always immediately, take it off, remove it as soon as possible. Saints, God's message is clear. Don't allow yourself, talking about me, the perfectly imperfect one, to sit in the mess of darkness, guilt, shame, pettiness, unrepentantness, or disobedient, or I will remain irritated, bitter, hurting, and rashed up. God has sent too many pastors, 17 men on Mondays, and people to warn us of the coming results of our sins. God will use even our children to get our attention. Every day God sends us a message. Wake up, child. I love you. And even when we know that his word may not make us feel all joyous and peaceful inside, let our response be, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you've enjoyed today's Monday, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like to partner with us, please know that there are three ways you can, can contribute, and they will be listed below. And that is by mail, by sending it to 4555 Fairfields Avenue, online at www.bereanbatonrouge.com, or you can use our cash app, that's dollar sign, capital B, and then lowercase E R. E A N <laughs> four five five five. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer before we end this out. Heavenly Father, I lift your name on high. I love God, the word that you put in me to share with my brothers and sisters in Christ. But God, also today we ask and we request that you cover the Pew family, that you cover Brother Pew's daughter specifically. We ask you, God, that you would please cover the Henry family the Prochets, the Landrys, and those going through private tough times. Pastor Wegar, our Bible workers, and our upcoming evangelistic series. Also, Sister Esco, Sister Edwards, Sister LaCole and her family, our dear brother Blue and his family, our sister Lynn Hakeem, and traveling mercies on the highways and byways. 
and most importantly, all of our church family be lifted and covered. We also pray for the willingness to listen, God, with a meek and unmurmuring spirit of submission. Make us available for you, all by the power of the Holy Spirit, and in Jesus' name, amen. Y'all continue to have a wonderful day, a wonderful Monday, and be blessed.